Gamescom has come and gone, bringing with it a pretty decent amount of information and footage about Capcom's upcoming title, Monster Hunter Wilds. From this event, we finally got the chance to see raw gameplay. To see how the game looks, sounds, feels, how the new mechanics work, their synergies with each other, their purposes, and there were even some revelations publicly presented that remain hidden until then. Though, most of the game still remains unknown to us, which is a good thing in my opinion. World and especially Rise revealed so much content with their trailers that, by the time the games launched, we knew practically everything both had to offer when it comes to monsters, locales and mechanics. That takes away that sensation of discovery and surprise of fighting something we didn't know it was there. And while that doesn't make or break a game by any means, it was very unnecessary to do so, or at least to that extent. Seeing the massively reduced the amount of things displayed on the four trailers posted so far is such a great improvement when it comes to that, and watching the community's acknowledgement of that proves it. But we are not here to talk about marketing strategies now, are we? We are here for gameplay. So, how is Wilds exactly? Did people like it? Is the game good? For the past few weeks, both the game's demo and developer livestreams were collectively seen by millions of people and meticulously analyzed by dozens of content creators, and the overall impression of Wilds is unanimous. This game is fantastic. All the new mechanics, the new weapon moves, the new monsters, locales, the way the ecosystem is so dynamic, interactable and immersive, the new improved movement, the more freedom players have in the game in general, everything put together just feels right. People had an absolute blast playing the demo, and the entire fanbase is in awe for how expensive and ambitious this title is. Wilds is setting up to be not just a blockbuster entry next year, it's a strong competitor to the title of best Monster Hunter game ever made. Me, on the other hand, fortunately have a more conflicting thoughts about it. Before I go any further, however, to prevent people from perceiving my stance as just nonsensical hatred, please allow me to clarify some things first. I do not believe by any means that the game is going to be bad at launch. Not at all. If anything, I actually agree with those who say that Wilds will most likely be more financially successful than World was. It does make sense. The game has the fundamental pillars it needs to achieve that goal and more. The franchise is more well known and renowned than ever before, so this title has a lot more eyes pointed at it than its predecessors. It is essentially open world, which is a very popular and attractive feature for players who are new to the series or most people really. The gameplay is more fluid by allowing hunters to freely hunt whatever they want at any time and not being forced to return to the camp for each monster they slay. The general movement is more responsive and flexible. Combat is more grounded like world with additional moves and mechanical complexity. Multiple issues both fifth gen games had were solved, being weapon design the most visually recognizable example. The game looks amazing, it sounds amazing, and from what many people claim when they got the chance to try the demo for themselves, it feels amazing. And I absolutely agree with every single one of those points. I have no doubt that Monster Hunter Wilds will not only be well received by the community at large, it will even surpass world success. So, if I don't think what was shown is bad or the game is inferior to the titles that came before it, what exactly is my problem with it, you're probably asking. My mixed feelings towards it after watching the demo is not about its quality, but rather its direction. There are some features and details presented in the multiple hours of footage that we have at our disposal, which I'm afraid will subtly but significantly affect the overall gameplay experience in a way that may reduce the level of enjoyment while playing at least to a portion of the community there is. I will try to explain my reasoning to the best of my ability and get ready because this is going to be a lengthy video. There will be chapters in case you want to hear only one specific criticism I have, 
but I suggest you to listen to all of it since there are some statements that require context of other points I mentioned prior, so keep that in mind. Also, despite the video being a bit on the longer side, my list is actually very short. If I don't mention something here, I most likely have either no complaints about it, I think it's pretty good, or they are just not important enough to be talked about here. Let's begin with one that I already mentioned before. A while ago, I made a video discussing some concerns I had about Wilds when they released some of those initial overviews before the weapon showcases. One of my concerns was the absolute absence of tracking. Since on that specific footage all monsters were permanently present on the map just like in Rise, so I fear that in 6th gen they would double down rather than return to World's Vision, which I believe is what most people wanted. And unfortunately, as much as I didn't want that to be the case, it turns out that such mechanic is indeed gone. Technically. Capcom mentioned that tracking still exists, but will only be performed a single time per monster meaning that once you find an unknown target, it will forever be marked on the map from then onwards. This is something I am profusely disappointed about. While it was never a big gameplay focus, tracking is still important due to it being a fundamental component of hunting, and it should never be set aside to the point of irrelevancy. I already said this on that previous video, but I will summarize it here for context's sake. And trust me, this will make sense. A hunt is an activity divided into three phases. Search or tracking, pursuit and capture or killing depending on what you want to do. They can have an equal chunks of time, their order can be changed around a little bit, their order can even partially repeat itself several times, but all of them need to be there. Without them present and working in conjunction, this is no longer a hunt, it's merely a fight. And that distinction has weight. Now, I know that this is just a video game and we can't let authenticity and immersion get in the way of gameplay and exist in detriment of the player's experience. I am fully aware of that. But this case specifically is not that. Monster Hunter, as goofy, extravagant and combat-oriented as it is, was always very entrenched with its sense of immersion. In everything. Since the very first entry that the developers put a ridiculous amount of effort, time, resources and focus into the world's ecology, world-building through environmental storytelling and thematic atmosphere, to best represent the kind of experience they want players to have. They want this universe to feel alive and believable, with creatures of all shapes and sizes with their own detailed grounded biology, behavior, needs and traits, the locales having a synergetic relationship with the animals that inhabited it, even the overall gameplay loop and game progression were part of it. The series was never just about us killing dragons for gear. It was about us taking the role of an ordinary person whose job is to complete assignments managed by an organization that aims to keep a balance between nature and civilization, which involves killing a lot of dragons for gear. We are not warriors, we are not soldiers, we are not mercenaries, we are hunters. And the things we do in-game, from the preparation at the village to sling the monster after a very long battle, perfectly represented that vision. Obviously combat is the most enjoyable portion of the whole process, but without that, without tracking, the game loses an essential portion of that immersion. And sure, that mechanic was immensely bare bones throughout the majority of the franchise's history, but it still existed and had a purpose, even if poorly executed for all those years. Besides, just because it was bad before doesn't mean it needs to stay that way. And World changed that. World was the only game so far that took that element to heart and created a more complex and detailed version of it. A version 
that made it more intrinsic to the overall gameplay loop, more engaging, almost fun even. That system was far from perfect, it had flaws, but it was going in the right direction. All it needed was time to be refined even further, have time to cook, to evolve, to become a better iteration of itself. Seeing it not only reintroduced, but improved in the 6th generation would be a fantastic way to make Wilds even more elaborate with its immersive elements, which, let's not forget, is its biggest selling point. But sadly, no. They didn't try that at all. Just scrapped it altogether. And that is very unfortunate. A decent segue from this, since we are talking about world building in a way, is the world itself. Or the maps, rather. Again, this is not about them looking bad or being badly designed or anything. Windward Plains looks phenomenal. The vibe is very North African ish and it's recreated in the Monster Hunter style beautifully. The different areas are so unique and distinct from each other despite being situated in the same locale, which is a nice touch, and it's also very dynamic, with the several weather changes and the wildlife's behavioral complexity. Oh, and the fact that monsters can deform dunes with their attacks? Oh, chef's kiss. That's some cool ass piece of tech right there. What intrigues me though is something else entirely. Maybe I got the wrong impression, but I was expecting the maps to be. larger? Not that I want them to be larger, keep that in mind. I have seen that size comparison picture between Wind World and Wild Spire Waste numerous times already, and that size is more than enough for me. But knowing how some specific features were supposed to work in the game, I had the idea that each area would be even bigger than what was shown. Let me explain why. We learn early on that hunters can set up multiple camps throughout each locale. At Gamescom, we also learn that our fellow sacreds possess a small inventory where we can store items, and it's also where extra supplies end up during our hunts. With those aspects in mind, plus the existence of a mound in the first place made me believe that locales would be vastly more expensive. So much so that we would need a quick and versatile form of transportation, extra resources and placeable stopping points in order to have a safe space to change gear, eat and the like closer to our objective. I was expecting the maps to be big enough to justify all these features, because I thought that was the reason behind them existing in the first place. It would make sense to get all these additional commodities in wilds if we would have to traverse extremely large distances and caps were few and far between, which could be an amazing facet of the game. In World and Rise there was a pretty sizable portion of the community criticizing the excessively free access to items hunters had. Being able to retrieve every single consumable you stored throughout your progress at any time during the hunt and even having the option to instantly teleport to it was just way, way, way too much. That not only diminishes the value and meaning of preparation to the point of becoming inconsequential, it also devalues the effort players put in learning how to fight monsters. Because why would you need to improve your gameplay knowledge and skill other than self-fulfillment if you can just keep checking potions and endlessly buffing yourself until the monster dies? When I saw the sacred packed with bags and equipment running through a vast landscape, I got the idea that the map would be massive. Massive to the extent that we would need our mount to traverse it in a comfortable amount of time. But that's not what we are getting. In fact, this is even worse than Rise. The maps are bigger, sure, but it's not enough to justify all of this. Not only we get a fast mount, not only the camps are everywhere and you can get to them in 15 seconds on foot, you can still teleport to them, you can still restock anything you want, and on top of all of that, you get even free stuff every so often while fighting the monster. You don't even need to go to the camp, the consumables literally go to you while in combat. And this confuses me beyond belief. Why are we getting all these mechanics in a playable area that can't support them to the fullest extent? Why have teleports? 
Sacred's major purpose is to take us to our destination quicker. Teleportation is taking away part of its functionality for no reason other than meaningless convenience. These mechanics are eating each other for practicality rights which is completely unnecessary. Who on this earth would consider Wilds a worse product for not having teleport when they are alternatives specifically crafted to do the exact same thing differently? And do we really need to be spoon-fed by the game with items on the spot? Why bother with camps then? Hell, put the hunter's entire inventory on the secret instead since it's so inconvenient having to stop fighting for a few seconds to refill your mega potions. Rurokan had an interview with the lead developers of Monster Hunter Wilds, which, congrats by the way, I know you wanted to do that for a very long time and I'm super happy for you, and one of the questions asked was how do they balance the two main aspects of the series, namely the combat and the hunting simulation, preparation and all that. Their response was, and I'm gonna quote this, I think our approach since Monster Hunter World has been don't let those get in the way of the main hunting action by becoming too much of an admin task you have to manage at all times, because it just becomes inventory management at that point. We have got a different approach this time around that will hopefully reduce the overhead of admin and let you just focus on the action itself a little bit more. I love the Monster Hunter devs, I really do. They are super nice, they like engaging with the community, they love their work, they love the franchise they built, and I wouldn't want any other team to make Monster Hunter games than them. But I'm sorry, there is only one way you can interpret this response. Balance? There is none. Capcom sees preparation, the hunting simulation, commitment of side of quests as detrimental to the game. That it takes away from the combat aspect of the series. There is no shadow of a doubt that the developers prioritize the latter over anything, and they are knowingly, willingly, and deliberately sacrificing literally half the game's identity and gameplay in benefit of combat. And this statement confirms that. So why keep them in the game even? If we are reducing those systems to such a minuscule and basic degree, why not get rid of them entirely? Replace the potions with Estus Flask that refill over time. Remove sharpness decay from the game. Make every item and resource purchasable from the shop so we don't have to farm anything ever again. Have every single item you ever collected in your personal inventory so you don't even need to stop fighting to restock. I respect Capcom immensely, but I strongly disagree with this decision and this mentality. There is nothing in the series, nothing, that gets in the way of fighting monsters or affects the enjoyment of doing so. Everything non-combat related is completely separate and the minimal overlap that there is, none of it prevents you from experiencing combat to the fullest extent. The hunting simulation and preparation component are just as important, but they never took away anything from fighting. That was not its problem. You know what those things were? Annoying. They were annoying to interact with. Those gameplay elements always felt clunky, archaic, almost detached from the flow of the game. But it was a part of it. It was a core pillar of the franchise's vision. The very specific experience Capcom wanted us to have. It was just barely touched for so many years that they were kept pretty much the same for numerous generations while combat kept evolving and getting more attention from the devs, and over time, the satisfaction discrepancy between those mechanics and the latter became so large that the former just doesn't feel good to work with at all for most people. But not because preparation got worse, but because combat got exponentially better. Fighting monsters is so much fun, why bother with all these boring tasks, resource management, maintenance crap? I'm here for the monsters, goddammit! But again, they are part of the series' identity. 
they are part of what makes Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter. Those mechanics feel bad because the developers never really put much focus into them beyond the first two generations. And now, after over 10 years of doing next to nothing with them, instead of finally doing something about it, they pull a 180 and go, you know what, this stuff was never important in the first place. And start removing them one by one? Why? There was no need for them to stay clunky or archaic, let alone be removed. Just like tracking, they could have focused on those systems they now deem detrimental and improve them in such a manner that retains their purpose and identity, while also making them more accessible, easy to understand, easy to work with, more engaging, more fun essentially. But they didn't do that. At some point they changed their design philosophy and simply decided that those same features were not only unnecessary, they were dragging combat down somehow. Wilds has some very intriguing choices that don't seem to have any reason or reasonable justification behind them. Take the new armor changes for example. And, and no, it's not what you think, hear me out. Among many other things, it was also announced that armor sets were no longer gender locked, meaning that male and female sets can be used by either gender in any combination possible. That is great. For many, many years that the community has been consistently asking for that change to be implemented. And not only we are getting exactly that, we already know that Transmog will be in the game day one, becoming available to players at a certain point in the story. If it was this, and simply this, I would have absolutely zero complaints about it. But unfortunately that's not where this ends. Despite the huge positive that this brings, it was later added that alpha and beta sets are gone. We get two armors for monster, male and female, and that's it. As much as I like gendered sets being unlocked, this is a horrible caveat to have. Fashion hunting is a humongous aspect of Monster Hunter, especially in a late game. Visual customization is just as important as the weapons we use in battle, and the developers know that. That's why they made these changes in the first place, which is why it makes no sense to me. Them taking away set variants. Just for you guys and girls to understand just how bad we are getting in wilds, take a look at this. In the classical games, armor was not only divided by gender, but also by class, either range or melee. So until Generations Ultimate, each monster had at least, yes, at least, some had more, at least four sets. One ranged for men, one melee for men, one ranged for women, and one melee for women. The catch though, was that none of them could be mixed with each other. The maximum thing we could do was use the helmet of the opposing class, and even that was gender locked. And thus, the community asked, please Capcom, remove set restrictions, we want to use all these beautiful armors at will. Fast forward to Worldborn, the armor system was changed, going from Gunner Blade Master sets to Alpha and Beta sets. Still gender locked, but at least now hunters could mix and match both variants fully, so there was an improvement there. The problem with this change though, was that in the process, they completely butchered what was supposed to be the Gunner version by making them either alternative blade master sets from previous gens, basically having two blade masters rather than one of each, or just copies of the same set with minor color differences, and sometimes even that was barely noticeable. And now, in the sixth gen, they are finally not locked by gender, but they are cutting out the variants. We went from four completely distinct armor sets to four, half of which was mostly a reskin, to just two. I don't know about you, but this is not an improvement. This is cutting corners. Don't get me wrong, gender unlocked armor on its own is fantastic. It's more choices for everyone and I will always advocate in favor of such. There are zero negatives about that in a vacuum. The issue here 
is that they are giving us something we wanted while at the same time removing another piece of it. They are giving us the illusion that we are getting more customization when in reality we are actually getting less. Because you can think whatever you want, but do you really think when fans were asking for less gear restrictions, they were specifically asking that so they could wear skirts and bikinis? No, they were asking for everything, not just the other gender's clothing exclusively. This is what we have been asking for, at least not entirely. We were asking for all four to be present and having no limitations on what we could use with what. And we are getting a slice of the pie while another is being taken away from us. Personally, I highly doubt this was a deliberate decision. What most likely happened was that the devs realized making armor variants would consume too much of their time and resources, which forced them to make the tough decision of giving up on the main wilds. And to compensate, they made the remaining sets genderless. Perhaps that last part was planned from the very beginning and it was just an unfortunate coincidence they had to remove content in that department, but in the end, this is not a pure improvement. It has its downsides, and they are heavy. With so many areas of the game they could have cut corners, this one specifically was a very sad choice. Honestly, they could have actually not added some of the new systems if you ask me. Because the more gameplay I see, the less impact they appear to have. This takes us back to the debate I was talking about earlier of the world in wilds not being as expensive as I thought it was going to be. And another reason I believed such in the first place, alongside what I already mentioned before, was weapon swapping. It did make sense having an additional weapon at hand in that context. Being in a massive area where hunters are far away from home and general civilization, being incapable of quickly change equipment, having a second option would provide players with extra tools to deal with unexpected events. Because let's say that you are out on a hunt against a monster that is extremely aggressive at close range. So you bring a lens. But before getting to your target, you are ambushed by another monster that focuses in ranged attacks and is often out of reach. If you only had lands, that new monster you weren't counting on would put you in a very precarious situation with a massive disadvantage. But with a swapping system, you could bring an extra weapon, like a bogan or something, that would cover the weaknesses of your main and thus form a synergy which rewards pre-planning and active thinking. But this mechanic only really works and reaches its full potential if players don't have access to the other systems. For this to function, it needs to be isolated from other mechanics like camping, for example. And that is the problem here. You don't really need to swap. If that same circumstance occurs in wilds, you can just teleport to a random camp, change gear and off you go. Sure, it's quicker to simply switch on your sacred, but having the option, and that is the important part here, having the option of doing the same thing in two different ways will eventually cause one to be superior than the other for a multitude of reasons, and camps massively diminish the impact of weapon switching due to its superior utility. You can teleport to a safe location, switch your entire gear, not just your weapon, refill whatever consumables you have or even add some that you didn't have before which is far, far more useful than just switching your weaponry mid-hunt. These features are not bad by any means, but because of how Wilds is built, they feel obsolete, unnecessary. They feel more like a basic gimmick with no real impact rather than a useful mechanic, which is what I think Capcom was aiming for. And it's really a shame because it's the game itself that it's causing their own systems to be that way whilst itself is preventing them from being truly useful. Instead, it's just a forgettable component that, while it's cool and unique to the series, it doesn't really provide with as much utility as it should have if the game was designed differently. Actually, when it comes to double weapons, its existence kinda seems to be more detrimental than it's worth if you really think about it. Because of that addition, Capcom had to redesign the skill system entirely for better mechanical synergy, and it appears that they tried to solve that problem by making offensive skills attached to weapons, 
while defensive skills belong to armor pieces. If I'm completely honest, I don't think that's a good idea. For one, you're tying specific weapons to specific skills, which will 100% discourage players to use a vast amount of weapons solely because their skills either suck or they don't fit the build they are making. Though, to be fair, Transmog will be a thing anyway, so that's not as significant, fortunately. Visually speaking, that is. And second, this can go one out of two ways. These changes will either make single weapon focused builds impossible to do, which would force people to constantly switch weapons to maximize their set's potential rather than being a choice, and people hate being forced into things, or even with all the changes it will still be impossible to make full builds for both weapons, making one of them highly situational at best, or utterly redundant at worst, ending up with one of the weapons being nothing more than a skill storage device that will never be picked. Or worse, everyone will choose Hunting Horn as a secondary because not only they can do the same thing, but on top of that they can also buff themselves before the hunt, fight, disengage, buff again, fight, hunt and repeat until the monster's dead. I know that this is a very pessimistic point of view, but from what I know right now I'm extremely concerned that the double weapon mechanic will fall into one of these paths, and regardless of which, if that happens, it would be very, very bad for build variety. And this is really the main gripe I have with all of this. Nothing I have been talking about is bad. It's not badly implemented. No, the game seems to be amazing, and I'm sure that it is. I have no doubt that once I get my hands on it, I will enjoy it. But my enjoyment won't be as great as it should be because of the direction they are going with it. Monster Hunter is not just about combat, and it's not just about immersive ecology either. It's also about preparation, resource management, the struggle in battle and outside of it, commitment, having to organize your equipment or your inventory, having to plan what you should take on a hunt and dealing with the consequences of not doing so, being put in positions where you need to make tough choices, being inconvenienced and working towards circumventing them. I started with World, I'm a fiver like most of you, but I love the classic generations way more because of that, despite them having inferior combat. It was hard to make money, it was hard to farm items, get rare materials, take care of everything in the village, the games rewarded us for doing all of that, and it felt great. It felt fulfilling, rewarding. Nair Gigante is an amazing fight, possibly one of the best in the franchise. But god damn those hunts will never surpass the sensation of me having to kill Rafalos in try solely because I didn't have enough Zenny to upgrade my lands. Man that felt so much better than it had the right to be. That struggle imposed on the player and the sensation of surpassing it was one of the components that made the series the absolute hidden gem that it was. And it was magnificent. But I know who I am. I know my place. I am fully aware that the classical era of Monster Hunter is gone and it's never coming back. And I'm okay with it. I accept it. I may prefer the older games, but I also had a ton of fun with World. And me, alongside many others within the community were expecting Wilds to be a return to the world's formula, to not follow Ryze's direction by being a slower, more grounded experience. And while we do see that when it comes to combat and some other aspects, others however are not only more aligned to Sir Rex's vision, they go even further. This is a pattern, one that is slowly taking away that so beloved portion of the series and it's only getting worse over time. At this rate, by the 8th generation there will be nothing left, and at that point, I don't know if I will be able to enjoy it anymore. The franchise is becoming so obsessed with combat that it's willing to sacrifice the other elements that made this game so unique, so memorable, so surreal, just so players can focus in fighting monsters even more. Everything else is becoming dispensable, set dressing. Streamline everything, fighting is all that matters. 
I know for certain that I will enjoy Wilds. The game looks absolutely fantastic and it will do wonderfully when it launches. But with this pattern, if it keeps getting this extreme every title, I'm not sure if I can say the same about the next one. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you want to join the ranks you can do so for only $1 a month, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below, join our Discord server, engage with the community, and I hope to see you all next time.